Sciences at the ETH Zurich. And the presentation is how anisamide, the correct color, is take, taken up by tumoral cells. Thank you for your introduction, and I would also like to thank the organizers of the plenum for giving me the opportunity to present some results of my still ongoing PhD uh, work uh, on um, the cellular uptake of anisamide targeted particles. Uh, active tumor targeting uh, with nanoparticles aims at increasing the interactions between the par particles and the tumor cell after the particles have extravasated at the tumor site. Among the di different tumor targeting ligands uh, currently used in preclinical research to decorate, decorate nanocarrier systems, uh, the small molecules have recently uh, attracted uh, much attention because of the advantages they present, uh, including the lower risk of immunogenicity or the higher stability compared to the large bi biologic molecule, and also the ease of incorporation uh, of these small molecules on the nanoparticle surface by means of simple chemistry. One uh, small molecule that has appeared in the literature 11 years ago as a tumor targeting uh, molecule is the anisamide, and uh, this will be the topic of uh, my talk. Uh, the idea of using the anisamide uh, as a tumor targeting ligand for nanoparticles uh, came from uh, a class of molecules uh, of this structure here, uh, of iodobenzamides, that had been uh, shown previously to um, uh, act as uh, good tumor imaging aid agents uh, in uh, several uh, rodent tumor models. So based on these molecules, the group of uh, Professor Li Huang, uh, 11 years ago, thought for the first time to incorporate the anisamide, the, um, the methoxybenzamide structure, which they called anisamide, uh, on a lipid peg, peg conjugate and incorporate this conjugate uh, on liposomes. These liposomes in, in this first study showed uh, good um, tumor accumulation in a mouse model. And um, in that uh, first publication, the, uh, the tumor targeting properties of anisamide were attributed to a receptor called the sigma-1 receptor because of the binding of the, the, the class of molecules, the imaging agents that had been shown to bind this sigma-1 receptor. Uh, this receptor is a molecular uh, chaperone of the endoplasmic reticulum of cells, and it was considered a good uh, tumor target uh, because it, ha uh, it has uh, been reported to be expressed by several human and rodent uh, cancer cell lines, and it has been shown overexpressed by some um, human tumors compared to the non-malignant tissues. Um, based on uh, the tumor imaging agents, the iodobenzamides, um, uh, all the next uh, publications showing uh, particulate systems decorated with anisamides, uh, they attributed to the tumor targeting properties of those particles, which were shown in vitro as well as in vivo, to the sigma-1 receptor that was suggested in the very first publication. However, um, even if we have more than 35 papers with dif different nanoparticle systems decorated with anisamide, and we see some examples in this uh, slide, uh, in none of uh, these um, reports, uh, the interaction of uh, anisamide with the sigma-1 receptor uh, was um, investigated. So the goal of our study was to investigate the uptake of the anisamide-targeted particles. To do that, uh, we decorated particles with anisamide and we, s we used uh, the starting materials, commercially available polystyrene fluorescent particles bearing amine groups on their surface and we used the uh, amine groups for the functional layers of the particle surface. Uh, we pegylated and targeted the particles uh, using uh, this peg anisamide conjugate that was synthesized, as you see in the bottom of the slide, uh, and we obtained the pegylated targeted particles. And the same, uh, in parallel, we um, prepared pegylated but non-targeted particles as a control. Uh, we investigated the in vitro uptake. Uh, we used uh, two, cell two cell lines, uh, B16FN murin melanoma cells as a model, model cancer cell line, and also um, murin macrophage-like cell line uh, as a control of uh, non-tumoral but uh, highly endocytic particles. Uh, 
Uh, in this graph, we see the uptake of, the, of all the different types of particles. So we see on the left that uh, the non-functionalized particles be bearing amine groups on the surface are highly taken up by both cell lines because of the uh, non-specific interactions of the positively charged particles with the cell membranes. However, after pegylation in the middle, we see that uh, the uptake by both cell lines is reduced. Then when we uh, have the anisamide at the distal end of the bed, we see on the right of the graph uh, that the um, uptake remains low by the highly phagocytic macrophages, but it is in enhanced uh, by the tumor cells. And we also observed by PEM and by confocal microscopy that after four hours, the particles were inside the cells. Uh, since we had the system um, that showed, like uh, the previous reports, that the anisamide targeted particles are specifically taken up by tumor cells, we then wanted to investigate the interaction of the anisamide targeted particles with the sigma-1 receptor that has been before here. Uh, we started by conducting the experiment that has been uh, used in the literature to uh, show that the interaction of uh, anisamide with the tumor cells is via the sigma-1 receptor. And this is a co-incubation experiment of the particles with non-sigma-1 receptor ligands uh, on the cell. Uh, in the literature, haloperidol is used because it is a non-sigma-1 receptor ligand uh, for co-incubation in the particle. Uh, and so we used this uh, compound and also another non-sigma-1 receptor ligand. And these are the results of this uh, competition experiment. And uh, we observed that either with the non-functionalized particles or with the pegylated and anisamide targeted particles. On one hand, when we use uh, the um, second sigma-1 receptor ligand, that you see there is uh, no difference in the presence of abs absence uh, of this, or this compound on the uh, particle uptake results. And on the other hand, with haloperidol, we have reduction of the uptake of both particles, both types of particles. Uh, we then, then thought that perhaps it is because of toxicity of haloperidol on the cells, and we investigated this uh, with a real uh, time cell analysis system, which monitors the um, uh, morphology and the growth of cells, and we uh, monitored this in the, uh, the growth of, cell, of the B16 F10, F10 cells in the presence of haloperidol of increasing concentrations. And we saw that indeed haloperidol has an effect uh, in the micromolar range already uh, on the growth of cells. And uh, with this, uh, also data from the uh, lit literature corroborate with uh, this idea. And we f when we looked in the literature, we found that there are reports showing the cytotoxic effect of haloperidol. And uh, part of this cytotoxic effect is due to uh, the effect of the compound on the formation of the cytoskeletal components, which probably affects uh, the, um, the internalization uh, uh, process of the cells. Uh, so uh, we thought that uh, the results obtain, obtained by haloperidol, which I, I repeat is the experiment that has been used in previous uh, reports to show that uh, the uptake is mediated by the sigma-1 receptor, probably we think that the, uh, this effect is uh, due to non-specific uh, um, effect of the, of the compound on the cells, on the, on the endocytic activity of the cells. So um, we wanted to continue um, to investigate the interaction of anisamides with the sigma-1 receptor. So at the next step, we wanted to correlate the expression levels of the receptor with the particle uptake and see if there is a correlation. Uh, this is why we downregulated the expression of the receptor using siRNA uh, on the B16F10 cells. And we saw uh, that, that there is no difference in uptake of the cells, even if the um, the level expression levels of the protein uh, are less than 30 per 20 percent um, of the non rna treated cells. Uh, to dig a bit more on this, uh, we found another cell line, a murine cell line that expresses the sigma one receptor in similar levels as the B16 F10 cells, and uh, we. Um, uh, conducted the particle uptake experiment, and uh, we saw here that the um, uptake of the anisamide functionalized particles is not enhanced as in the case of the B16F10 cells, even if the uh, sigma-1 receptor is expressed in similar levels. 
Um, so we, we concluded that there is no correlation between the expression of the protein and the particle at the end. Finally, whether the sigma-1 receptor could be used as a tumor targeting ligand or not um, lies in the exact subcellular localization of the receptor. So I mentioned earlier that this is an, uh, an ER protein. However, in the past there has been some controversy um, on the exact subcellular localization of the receptor and uh, with the techniques of differential centrifugation that was used in the beginning in the first studies uh, of this receptor, it was thought that most of the receptor is intracellular, uh, but uh, they thought there, there is a bit on the plasma membrane. However, with uh, the newer uh, techniques and the advances of the molecular biology, we now know that it is an ER protein, and uh, this itself uh, uh, shows that uh, this receptor could not be used for uh, tumor targeting ligand because this would uh, necessitate uh, presence of the receptor on the membrane of the cell. So we just wanted to investigate on our cell uh, on the D16 FN cell, the subcellular localization, and we found by flow cytometry that uh, it was possible to stain the receptor not on living but only on fixed and permeabilized cells. And also by uh, immunostaining for microscopy, we found the, that the expression is intracellular and uh, it's a, we, we see perinuclear localization, and this is probably the uh, ER localization that has been reported in the literature. So to sum up, uh, uh, our results show that uh, probably the sigma-1 receptor is not the molecule that mediates the anisomide target, uh, targeted particle uptake. And uh, in our future work, uh, we would like to see whether indeed there is a specific mechanism mediating the uptake of the anisomide uh, tethered particles. And if there is a mechanism, we would like to uh, find which mechanism it is. And this is ongoing work. Uh, for this work, I would like to thank uh, my group and um, my professor Jean-Christophe Leroux and uh, also Dr. Pablo Hervela for initiating this project and also the group of Professor Detmar and the whole pharmacogenomics group, pharmacogenomics group of our institute for all the technical and scientific support and also Krebs Liga Spice for financing this project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. We have time for one or two questions. You said one thing on there which got my attention and you were talking about the cytoskeletal effect. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing a similar effect with the materials that you're using, even though it's not this necessarily res this receptor? Um. What you, uh, the, cytoskeletal, the, the effect on the cytoskeletal component is yeah, yeah, the yeah. drug, is of haloperidol. It's, it's upregulated. I'm sorry? It's, it's upregulated or is not up? It, it affects it or it does not? Uh, we haven't checked this okay. uh, on our cells. We just found um, um, data in the literature with other cell line. But we have not checked on our cells whether haloperidol in, indeed um, uh, induces a change, but we have checked uh, the um, effect of haloperidol on the uptake of some endocytosis markers. Uh, so we used um, dextran, um, lactosyl ceramide, and uh, human transferrin, and we saw that uh, the presence of haloperidol uh, decreased significantly. The, um, I hope I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, decreased significantly the uptake of uh, human transferrin and of dextran. And this is one more indication that it is a non-specific effect on the endocytosis. Thank you. Any other question? So thank